time is money when it comes to 3D rendering. So I figured we would take a look at how we can use AI to reduce our render times by two or three times or even four or more. So we're gonna be using Topaz Labs Video AI for this. Now, full disclosure, I did apply for an affiliate link, which is available in the description, but they did not give me any sort of discount or provide me with a license. It was, I just found this, stumbled across this program and found it to be extremely useful. And I figured I would be using it quite a bit here in the future. So I figured we'd take a look at how we can go about using this. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can use this. If you do wanna try this program, by the way, it is free to try, it is watermarked to start out with, but you can get a license and start exporting all your footage. Uh, in the upscale, there are all the different things that you can do with this program and enjoy the benefits of it. So let's just go ahead and bring over some renders here. So these few renders are just some things that I've rendered out. We're just gonna drag them into our workspace here. Drag that back off screen here. And once you've dragged them into the software, you have them appearing here in this little corner. And then we have a few things. Let's go ahead and just start off with selecting our clip. So uh, this is a few 480p renders. So these two are rendered in 480p and then we've got a 720p and then my 1080p that I rendered out. This is native, not upscaled. None of these are upscaled yet. So let's take a look at this uh, let's do this one, this 480p render. So with this 480p selected, we do have a bunch of presets over here. So if I click on this, we have a bunch of different things that we can do. I'm just gonna go ahead and select this upscale to 4K. We'll take a look at some of these other ones probably in a different video, but let's go ahead and just mess with the presets for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and select crop to fill and we're gonna leave it at 24 FPS. We can convert to other frame rates, which is super cool and super useful. And we're going to not up, uh, upscale it to 4K. We want to just go to regular full HD, so 1920 by 1080. 4K from 480p is stretching a little bit too far, but 1080p should be just fine. So it brings up some other settings down here. We have different types of videos. We have also different algorithms that we can use. We'll just leave this on Proteus right now. It is a pretty decent algorithm. There is this Gaia, which is basically just upscale, and we can actually select computer generated as the input type. So that's great for CG, but let's go ahead and switch it back over to this Proteus. This will also just do a little bit of fine tune and enhance, as it says here to the video so we'll change your footage just a little bit but that's fine for the moment now i'm going to go ahead and click this preview button and that's going to start the upscale process so this will take a little bit of time not too too much time here i do have a 3090 so this will go pretty decently quick uh, it's a pretty beefy card here so should work pretty fast but you can see right here we have about nine frames per second being generated so not too bad there we'll give this just a second to generate and you can play around with all these different settings there's all sorts of different things that you can do in here you can slow the footage down like i said you can convert it to a different frame rates and you can upscale it do all sorts of different things but let's take a look here hopefully this comes across pretty well i will put these available on patreon that all of these renders that i've included in this uh, folder not just the ones that we're taking a look at, but a bunch of my recent renders so that you can take a look at the upscaled ones as well as the the raw renders to kind of compare them as you will. And if you want to upscale them yourself and play around with them, you can do that. It will be available on Patreon on the, the lowest here. But let's go ahead and click play here and let's see what happens. Actually, let's zoom out here just a little bit. So you can see 480p on the left and then our full 1080p on the right. So go ahead and click play. You can see that it starts to play here and just by default here it looks pretty decent so not a whole lot of difference that you're going to see from a zoomed out view let's go ahead and move towards some of these later frames and then let's zoom on in here let's actually pause this move to some of these later frames and let's go ahead and zoom on in and in these reflections, so this, I chose this scene specifically because this is a somewhat difficult scene to render, or at least process intensive. 
because there is glass going on with a bunch of reflections. Glass is notoriously uh, cost ineffective to, to render. So it takes a, quite a bit of time to get a noise free render, but let's go ahead and take a look in here. So if we look at some of these reflections, we have obviously this pretty low quality coming up here on the 480p and it's doing a really, really good job of upscaling it into the 1080p. So all of these little jagged edges, it's handling them super, super well. It's really interpolating well into these reflections, giving us some really good results. And you can see some of this here in the back, still a little bit of noise going on here, but that's not too bad. There's some depth of field going on with some movement in here we're just generally playing the the footage back not really going to notice much going on here but does a really really good job of upscaling it and it goes really really quick now we can also select like our 1080 or our 720p footage here or our 1080 and upscale that to 4k i've already done that so let's go ahead and switch over to resolve and in the fusion tab here i've loaded in a bunch of different footages so let's go ahead and set this to a buffer wipe. So on the left here, I'm going to have our 1080p render. So let's go ahead and just drag that in there. And on the right, I'm going to have our 480p upscaled to start off with here. And maybe let's go forward a few frames here. And let's go ahead and just drag this over here because this is where things are going to be kind of most noticeable. Let's give us a little bit more room to work with here as well so we have an a b wipe here so as i drag this across it's going to switch between the two and you can see like i said 1080 on the left of 480p upscaled on the right here and as i drag between the two you can see that we lose some detail in here we lose some of those reflections but overall it does a pretty decent job this is a little bit blurry here on the 480p getting upscaled so definitely some difference there but honestly if this was being played in just normal playback, you're not really going to notice a whole lot. Let's go ahead and drag in the 720p, and you can see that this cleans up a lot, lot better. So there's virtually, as I drag this across, there's virtually no difference. And actually, if you take a look right in here, hopefully this comes across well in the video, but it actually looks better with the upscaled version. So it's clear in the upscale version. This is upscaled to 1080p. So 720p being upscaled to 1080p, it looks better in some of these reflections. We do lose the very, very fine, very small reflections. But again, that's not something that you're gonna notice when this is being played back. And just for a reference, this 1080p render took about 15 hours to render out the full, the full render. And the 720p render took about half that and we've upscaled it to 1080p in like a minute. So about half the rendering time in order to get the same quality of results in my opinion. Let's go ahead and move into some of these other renders here. So this is 720p upscaled to 4K. We'll, we'll put that on the left and then on the right, we'll put the 1080p upscaled to 4K. Let's take a look at the differences between these two. And again, I'm going to focus here on the reflections because that's kind of where you're going to notice most of the difference here. So as I go between the two, again, we lose, like I said, the 1080p on the left, 720 on the right. We lose these very, very fine details. If I zoom way in, you see we lose these very, very fine details in these reflections. But overall, this looks very, very good. There's not a big difference going on between any of the footage so as i drag across really you're not going to notice a difference unless you're really really zoomed in and like i said in motion you're not going to notice it at all let's go ahead and switch to a different render so this is going to be on the left 1080p on the right this is going to be our upscaled uh, 720p to 1080 we'll go back in our frame range here and make sure that we're getting the same thing. Looks like these are off for some reason. But overall, kind of where you're going to notice the difference in these two is not going to be in the motion of the ball. The motion of the ball is pretty much the same. Looks like these were different frame rates for whatever reason. So my mistake on that. But in the back here, this is where some of the noise is. So like I said, 1080p on the left, 720 being upscaled on the right. 
And we do have some color difference here. I think I forgot to switch this over to sRGB from OCIO, uh, the ACES color space. But overall, it's really not a, a huge difference. Um, actually, let's go ahead and just skip this one since I did kind of forget to switch that one over. But this is 1080p to 4K on the left and 720p to 4K on the right. Again, I guess I did the same thing on this one. But again, we're not really going to notice a big difference between the two here. Let's go ahead and make sure we're getting the same, same sort of look. Looks like, again, frame rates are off, but if I zoom way in here, you can see that, again, there's not a whole lot of difference going on in any of the background back here. So a little bit of di difference in the color, that's all right. If I go ahead and just move forward, maybe just some of this motion in the door. Looks like, for whatever reason, the frame rate is not matching, I guess, my mistake on, on that. But let's switch over to this 1080p, the smoke simulation, and let's see, this is 1080p scaled up to 4K. Actually, we'll, head, we'll move this all the way over if I can get it to hold. So this is an animation that I did with a smoke simulation. So if I just kind of play through here, you can see we got this nice smoke moving across this object revealing our object here. So you're thinking probably that this is not going to work very well with the upscale. It's going to lose a lot of the detail and the smoke. Let's go ahead and take a look and see. So let's actually just reveal the whole thing. If we look in here in the detail and the smoke, it does a very, very good job of keeping this detail in the smoke. And as I move through here into this bigger section, it retains all that detail from the upscale into 4K from 1080p. So it does a very, very good job of interpolating the frames. Like I said, it's going to kind of work like a normal upscale would work, uh, just a little bit better job, but with the AI, but the upscaling, if you're going from a too low frames or a too low resolution, I mean, to a too high of a resolution. So 480p to 4k is probably going to be pushing it too far, but you can, in my opinion, you can get away with 720p being upscaled all the way up to 4k and have it look phenomenal. Let's go ahead and move on to this last example here. So in this last example, oops, let's bring this back. We'll put, this is a 1080p on the left and the upscaled to 4K on the right. So big thing to notice here, if I zoom in here, hopefully you can find some examples of it. I guess it's kind of, kind of hard to tell, but this looks, as you play through it, it's kind of aliased quite a bit in certain areas. But as we, as we look at the upscaled version, it does a very, very good job of getting rid of all of that anti-alias or that aliasing going on. So the anti-aliasing taking place and we don't get any harsh edges as these lines are moving across the thing and also it doesn't have any sort of issues with compression or anything like that that doesn't really mess up anything going on obviously this wasn't really compressed too much but it does a very very good job of getting this upscaled and cleaning up any sort of issues that it might have seen now another thing to note with this i've just shown examples of this being footage you can if i drag this back over i have this uh, this thing of of EXRs that we can just drag in. Actually, I think we could just drag in the first one and it will bring them all in. So it's pretty much working just like any sort of uh, application where it reads in just a sequence of images. It's a very good job with that as well. So you can bring in your raw EXRs that you're exporting from whatever software that you're, that you're rendering with, drag those in, upscale them, and then do whatever you want. Now you can also run these through multiple times. So you can, you can export as an EXR. So we have different settings in here. You can export it back out to EXRs 
do your color correction and whatever else you need to do, and then bring them back in and maybe you run it back through a second time on some of these other other settings here. So maybe with this Proteus, maybe you start with this just the straight upscale and then you move over to this Proteus, maybe you like the, the fine tune and enhance, but this does a very, very good job of upscaling your footage and it will save you at an absolute ton of render time. So just imagine, like I said, the 1080p render of these balls took about 15 hours to render out. 720p took about half that, and then I upscaled it up to 1080p with virtually no loss in quality. Imagine that being set to 4K. Imagine how long that would take to render out to 4K. It'd probably take days to render out to 4K versus we can render it out to 720p, upscale it to 4K, and it looks pretty much as good as it would if you'd rendered it just raw to 4K. And it does it in what, probably like at least a fourth of the time, if not more. So definitely take a look at this program. Like I said, it is free to download and try out. It will be a watermark on it, but that's not too distracting. You can take a look at some of the harsher uh, things to where you think it might struggle, uh, maybe where noisier areas are at, see how it does with that does a pretty good job with noise. You can actually add noise back in. If you want some of that film grain look, you can add that back in as well, but take a look at it, play around with it. If you would like to use my link, then it, like I said, it'll be in the description, grab that and uh, it'll help me out a little bit. But anyways, I do plan on using this a lot here in the future. Uh, it's something that I wanted to just show in case you guys weren't aware that there is uh, some things that for especially lower end computers might, might benefit from can maybe start to render out things that you wouldn't necessarily think that you would be able to render if you're on a lower end system you wouldn't have to necessarily send it to a render farm either or maybe you send it to a render farm and you just save yourself some money at once you upscale it but like i said take a look at it see what you what you think uh, i definitely think i'm going to be using it quite a bit i'm going to be taking a, a deeper look at some of these things. I'll show you guys some things that it kind of struggles with as well as kind of how to get around some of those things, uh, kind of how it works in the back end, and how to make it look the best that you possibly can with your render. So look forward to that. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, uh, if you want to help me out a little bit, you can follow that link in the description and uh, take a look at it. But Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.